Hello, Keith here. Welcome to Math, Fun, and Games. Today, I'm going to briefly go over line of sight. Line of sight, I would like to do a longer video on this because it. I think it's some, probably be the most complicated thing for people who are new to war game or any specific war game. There can be a lot of math involved, but right now I'm just going to go over the basics of line of sight for MBT because I want to do a quick series of videos that describe the rules well enough so when I play the first game you might have some understanding of it and I don't want these videos to be very long they're just gonna be really quick like you can watch one a day and when we get started playing you'll have some of the basics so here's the spotting phase spotting ranges not line of sight the key thing about the key thing to remember about line of sight is these are will be obvious for some people but if you can see them always remember they can see you another thing is let's say you're on a table if you're on a table you're not going to see anything below the level of that table unless you're at the very edge of a table so if you're at an elevation and the center of location then you're not gonna be able to see over the edge there however if you're on an elevation and there's a smooth slope that goes down right in front of you then you're going to be able to see down that slope it's really simple so again, if you're on the top of a table and you move away from the edge, you're not going to be able to see anything below that table. However, let's say you're on top of a, a sloping surface, let's say. So you take that tabletop, you slope it at an angle, then, you're, then the table itself is not going to be blocking line of sight. where we get into that is continuous slopes over here over here it's a smooth you see where it says continuous slopes every hex goes down a level it's a smooth slope so you have complete vision over here you have a table factor it go it goes through the same level twice so it's like you have a table factor that will block line of sight in this direction so you won't be able to see anything in this direction same thing over here it's not continuous you'll have the table factor over here it goes through two hexes at the same level and they're going to be blocking to anybody on that level and that's a slight simplification but it's the best way to understand the continuous slopes rule goes over what a slope hex side is crests crests are so that that's a slope all right a slope is basically where you go from one level to the other a crest is i think unique to mbt and panzer in the sense that crests block crests block line of sight So you could have two units right next to each other and there's a crest between them and their line of sight will be blocked. So let's read, uh, let's read, I'm going to read what this says. This crest hex site eventually equally divides hill 1.7. Any vehicles and hexes V2, V I was going to say Victor 2 and Whiskey 1, but V2 and W1 might not spot one another due to the fact that they are at height 1 while the crest hex site is at height 2. So crests act like giant walls that you can't see over. So even if you're next to a unit on the opposite side of a crest, you can't see them. So remember that crests, crest block line of sight. Woods hexes. Woods have various heights in, if you played squad leader, then woods all have a height of one. Woods have different levels in Panzer and MBT. So over here, let's read. Light woods and woods hexes have a height of three, while you have heavy woods have a height of four above ground level. So 
Woods are very high in this game. And they do block line of sight. So buildings can be either level 1 or level 2. Just remember that if you're in a wood section, you're not at treetop level. You're at the ground. Rex. I apologize for the brief phone. Interruption is on airplane mode now. Rex. Rex pose a hindrance in some other games, like Advanced Squad Leader. They don't pose a hindrance to sight in Panzer Blitz, I don't believe. For line of sight purposes, Rex do not block line of sight. Now, if it's a brew up, a brew up is a vehicle on fire that explodes. When a vehicle is brewed up, it has smoke to the line of two. Now that still doesn't, smoke doesn't block line of sight, but it does hinder the contact. Hexides have a line of a height of one. Uh, now here we go. Here's the part of this lesson. So right here. So if you have an obstacle and it's higher than both your units, then it's going to block line of sight, obviously. It's just like that crest. That crest hex side is always going to be one level above the two hexes it's adjacent to, so it's always going to block line of sight. You can't see, if you, there's a building, you can't see through it. Okay. Smoke does affect line of sight. I believe it hinders the line of sight, but you have to check on that. Now, obstacles that are, now if you're both higher than an obstacle, obviously you can see each other. See if there's a picture of that somewhere. I don't think so. Yeah, right here. If you're higher than an obstacle, or you're at the same height as an obstacle, you're going to be able to see each other. Now, a special case occurs when one unit is higher than the other. And there's an obstacle between them, and that obstacle is higher than one of the units, but not higher than the other unit. There's going to be a line of sight blockage. If I'm on a hill, let's put me on a, on a cliff top. Imagine yourself on a cliff top, and you're looking down on a town, or you're looking down on a building, let's say. You're not going to be able to see right behind that building. There's going to be a blind spot there. So if a unit is on a hill and there are town hexes, say, or other hills hexes that are lower than that unit, those town hexes are going to create blockages, are going to block line of sight. The higher you go, and it's going to create a, an area behind it, where you're not going to be able to see anything. The higher up you go, the smaller that area is going to be. Where So if you're at height of 4 over an obstacle, that obstacle is going only going to block the hex immediate, immediately behind that obstacle. So if you're higher than an obstacle by four or more it almost but not quite negates the blind spot created by that obstacle the obstacle is only going to have block it by one let's go down to level three so for level three this is a little math involved here for level if you're three heights square than the obstacle you take the distance from yourself to the obstacle, you divide by 8, round down, and then that will be the size of the blind spot behind that obstacle. So over here, height of 4, height of 1. 
So let's say the range from the vehicle on the hill to the obstacle is 18. So 18 divided by 4, 18 divided by 8 is 2, round down. So you're going to have a blind spot of two hexes there. So that's one example. So if it's lower by three heights, you take one eighth the distance to the obstacle, and that's the size of your blind spot. If you're lower by two by two heights, let's see if this is a situation lower by here, lower by two heights. The unit is on height three. The obstacle is in height one. You take this distance from the unit to the obstacle. In this case, it's 16 hexes. You divide by four. 16 divided by four is four. And you have a blind spot of four hexes behind that object. So for the four hexes behind that object, you can't see anything. So if it's only higher by one, you divide by two. So here's a case where the height, you're greater than two. The height that you're at is three. The height of the obstacle is two. Three minus two is one. You divide the range by two. 14 divided by two is seven. So this will have a blind spot of seven. So over here, Difference of height between the unit and the obstacle is one. You have a blocking of seven right here in this particular case. A seven hex in that case. Now you're going now the difference between you and the obstacle is two. You only have a blockage of four. And the difference in the so that's range 14. You only have an obstacle of four. Of course, we're moving the we're moving the obstacle out here. And last, the height of three, the difference, you only have a blocking height of one. So if you have a height of difference of four or more, there's one hex blind spot. If you have height difference between you and the obstacle of three you take one you divide the distance from between you and the obstacle by eight round down and that's the number of blocking hex sides if the height is two between you and the top of the obstacle then you divide the distance between you and the obstacle by four round down and that's the number of blind hex sides and if you're one above the obstacle, you take the distance from you to the obstacle, divide by two, round down, and then that is the size of the blind spot. So the higher up you go, the greater difference, the less the blind spot's going to be. So it goes from a couple last things. If you're on a river, or a stream, you can only be seen by units and see units that are right next to you. If you're, on a, you're considered level minus one, you can only be seen and, and see units that are right next to you. If line of sight goes through a hex side completely, it blocks line of sight totally. So all terrain is the equivalent, it's the equivalent of inherent terrain in some other different games. Let's see if I missed anything else here. Okay, here's another thing. If you play Panzer Blitz and you're in woods, they, you can't be seen. If you play another game, if you're in woods, if you're in the first hex of that wood, you can be seen. 
So that is a base. I just covered the basics of line of sight. I hope that made things a little bit clearer to you. I would like to do another video on this that goes into line of sight in general with a little bit more of math involved. But this should give you a quick understanding of line of sight. I thank you for listening. I'm going to be doing more of these videos. Next up, I am going to be talking about direct fire. I'm going to be talking about direct fire, and I might be going over the command process a little bit. Thank you for listening. And